on the bow. Um, we're doing that by pulling off planking, which then exposes the framing. As we start to replace frames, we're taking out every other one so we don't lose the shape of the boat. We'll take out every other one and then put new ones in before we take out the intermediate frames. So we can keep not only the shape of the hull, but also the plank layout, which we're scribing onto the new frames as we put them in. Um, the planking comes off by sawing it into little pieces and then chipping out the pieces between, which leaves us these frames full of fastenings. The framing comes out essentially the same way. This boat is so heavily fastened that you can't take out large chunks at a time. You have to take it out in very small pieces, the most efficient way to do it. So we'll cut the frame into sections and then split those. What, how we were going to do this job, and it is a big, big job. You have to have the boat out of the water for a significant amount of time, and there are very few ways to do that when you are 70 tons. So, um, the, the options before us were New York City, Staten Island, Long Island Sound, Gloucester, Massachusetts, Rockland, Maine, all places that are lovely places, but they're not home. And um, because of the funding we were able to get, because of the support we were able to get, because we, we have, in Ulster County, the skill, uh, and I'd like to thank Kevin Germont, who isn't here, um, but he was the, um, the, basically the manager, uh, general contractor, basically put together this idea of, let's put it on the barge and keep it in Kingston, or keep it in Saugerties. Um, I'd like to thank him. You know, many tens of thousands of dollars, and it's all being spent in the Hudson Valley. And that was really important to us, and we're really glad to keep it all local. Smith Hardware, you know, they know our crew by name. Um, they're clear. What Clearwater's up to. But well, you can guarantee that everybody that's here is going to be involved, and Marori Cinci is going to be leading. I just want to express my appreciation to everybody who's been associated with the Clearwater and continues to be associated with it, and who has done so much for this vessel. And in doing so much for this vessel, they have done and continue to do so much more for this Hudson River and the Hudson River Valley. We know what Pete Seeger did, how he came up with the idea that we needed to draw attention to the Hudson River and the need to clean it up back in the 1960s and early 70s, and how he initiated the, the, the development of this vessel. And I want to thank you for everything that you do, all the, all the and, and so devoted to it devoted to continuing it, maintaining it, and, and continuing its work. So much has been done. This Hudson River Valley now is exemplary. It's so much cleaner. I mean, it's far from perfect. We've got a lot of PCBs up, up north that uh, are still a major problem. <laughs> but nevertheless, it is, it is still so much better than it, than it was in the past. And this clear water was, in many ways, the initiator of the idea to clean up the Hudson River and to draw attention to it. I can remember the first time that uh, I sailed on this boat, which was back in, I think it was 1974 or 73, maybe, something like that. And it was a wonderful experience. I've got a great uh, photograph that somebody took. And I was looking pretty good in those days. <laughs> <laughs> pulling, on, pulling on this rope, and, you know, and, and, and working on this vessel as it was sailing up and down the river at that particular time. It was a great experience. And as a, a former 
member of the United States Navy who sailed on a different vessel out in the Pacific. This was a great, this was a great thing. So I, I just want to express my gratitude and appreciation to all of you for all of the work that you do to continue to maintain this vessel, continue to keep it strong, continue to keep it exemplary, and continue to keep it out on the river. And, I'm, and as a person who loves Saugatties, I very much appreciate the fact that it's been here every winter and all the work that has been done here to make it increasingly effective. So my devotion is to you. I'm deeply devoted to you and all the work that you do. I want to continue to help you in every way that I can, and I want to express to you my deep gratitude and appreciation for all that you've done. And to just say to you, it is a great pleasure and an honor for me to be working with you to get all of this good stuff done. Thanks very, very much. The goal is $3 million. In the first year, we have raised more than 500000 of that. So not insignificant. We're a sixth of the way into it in our first year. These logs, we paid $45,000 to buy these 15 logs delivered to the sawmill, our sawmill. We cut them up for free and got them over here. So the lumber for this, just the lumber for this renovation, and in the next couple of years renovations also, was expensive. It's not cheap. It's, it's, it's real money. The Keeping this boat floating indefinitely is a commitment of between sort of $100,000 and $300,000 annually, depending on what year you're looking at, on a repair bill. To make plywood patterns of the frames, which records the curvature of the hull, and also records the bevels that each plank has, or each, each frame has. Um, and we take the patterns, lay them on our new timbers, mark them out, mark the bevels on them, take them over to the saw, cut out the inside and the outside surfaces of the frames, duplicating the bevels, bring them back into the boat and fit them to make sure we have good fits down at the bottom where they meet the keel and up at the top where they meet the, the ends of the old frames that still remain in the boat. Fasten them in, go on to the next ones. At some point, we'll have all new framing in down here, then we can start planking again. And that involves planing down our plank material to the right thickness, and then taking plywood patterns again, laying them in the area that the plank goes, marking out the shape of each plank, cutting it, bringing it back in here, fitting it carefully, fastening it in place, going on to the next one. So it's a, a, a many-step process. The water is here in Saugerties because there are very few places on the Hudson River that are in the lee of the ice. And basically what that means is that you need to find a tributary that you can get out of the main ice flow of the Hudson River. And in Beacon, which is kind of our main place during the summertime, uh, there's a harbor, but the harbor is fully exposed to the ice flow as it comes down the river, which would crush the sides of the boat if we left it there during the winter. And being here in Saugerties, we are A, out of the ice flow, even though the ice is around us, and we can effectively use a bubbler to be able to keep the ice from crushing the boat. This winter was to stay local and to keep Clearwater home. And so to have a press conference this morning with our local congressman, with our local town board members, with our local press, um, it just really brought it all home. Uh, it's a great place to be, Ulster County, Saugerties, Kingston, Northern Dutchess County, it's the Hudson Valley. It's one of the best places in the world. Uh, and, and Clearwater wouldn't exist without the support of, uh, of local um, families and groups and uh, even politicians and town board members and, and local business people who are, who are generous with us. And, and, and it's a, just a perfect example of how it all fits together.